10 pounds of pressure there. And, and 10 pounds will allow me to now parallel my center line. Okay? In order for me to get back on the center line, how much pressure would I need? Maybe 12 pounds. Okay, 12 or 13. Good, I like it, right? So now I need maybe 12 pounds. And that starts to put me in this direction, right? Now, here's the part that people forget. You're rolling down the runway. And the more air that flows over the vertical stabilizer, right, the more effective the rudder surface becomes. Yes. So maybe at this point, when you're at V1, you may need 10 or 12 pounds. But as you prolong your stay on the runway and airspeed increases, you have a more effective rudder, and that directly affects how much pressure is required on the pedal. Yes. Make sense? Yes. This is why I always say the easiest way to do this is to parallel the center line, and you do it 100% visually looking outside of the center line. Okay. All right? So now, once you parallel the center line, you smoothly rotate off. Smoothly. And you imagine at the end of the runway a goalpost, and you're trying to fly through the goalpost. Okay. Okay? And why? Because again, I can only go 10 degrees left and 10 degrees right. So if I can fly through the center of this thing, I'm going to be right inside my PTS tolerances. Yes. So let me show you the next mistake people make. Okay? This is where everybody gets kind of hung up on this. I don't know where my eraser went, but here's, here's what happens with this, right? You end up having a flight director bar that's up here waiting for you somewhere in the neighborhood of about uh, 12 and a half degrees or so. Okay, let me grab another marker here. And, he, and here's what happens. Your flight director bar is here, and people go above the flight director bar. Above it. And the problem with going above it, okay, first of all, you always need to stay in it, right? Yes. But speed, exactly. So what happens is, think about this for a second. My airplane now is pitched up above the pitch attitude where it should be which probably happened at a pure adrenaline rush because, uh oh, an engine failed, you yanked the thing off the runway, and now you're above the flight director bar. Well, guess what? My thrust is fixed at takeoff thrust, right? There's no, it's not variable. So with, what I mean by that is the amount of power that I'm getting out of my operating engine, which would be number two in this case, happens to be the takeoff thrust setting. That might be 96%, 95%, 98%, whatever the number happens to be, it's a constant number. This isn't changing. So the only way that I can change speed now is with what? Pitch. So if you go too high above my flight director, what's going to happen to my speed? It's going to decrease. It's going to decrease. Decreasing the effectiveness of the rudder. Aha. Uh -huh. Decreasing the effectiveness of the rudder, right? So now my rudder is less effective. And with a less effective rudder, what happens to the required pressure? More. You, need more, more, you need more pressure. pressure. Yes. Okay? You need more pressure. So this is why I always say, you need to rotate, first thing you need to parallel the center line, you need to rotate smoothly and slowly, and you need to go right into the flight director. Okay? Now, let me show you why. I'm going to grab a model of airplane back here. And I realize this is not a 737, but the wings are still swept, so it's going to work okay. for us. Right? You see how the wings are swept like this? Yes. Okay? The wings also kind of doesn't show it too well. But if you look at it head on, you see how the wing kind of sweeps up? Yes. Okay, this is called dihedral. Yes. You've heard of that term before, right? So let me show you what happens with this. When the airplane yaws like this, let's say the airplane yaws this direction, right? Number one engine has failed. So the airplane's going to yaw, and as a result of the yaw on this swept wing jet, it's going to roll that direction. Now, the most common thing now... Okay, it's excellent. So now, the most common, which is kind of actually an error, it is an error, the most common remedy that pilots will undertake for this situation is they'll try to fix it with, uh, with the yoke. Because they see that they have a roll problem, so they try to fix it with aileron. Yes. But the truth is, they never rolled because of a roll problem. They rolled because of a yaw problem. So the yaw situation needs to be corrected first. You need to use the axis or the, the flight control surface that is responsible for that axis needs to be used first, right? Now let me tell you the problem with the 737. When you deflect the control column or the yoke 10 degrees or more, right, more than 10 degrees, what comes up over here? Flight spoilers, right? So now think about how bad of a situation this is. Your one engine 
uncoordinated and rolling with flight spoilers up. What is so? If I'm trying to climb with spoilers, first of all, I don't know why anybody. You cannot climb very well with spoilers. Do you agree? So now you're in a situation where you're exceeding 10 degrees and you're not even climbing appropriately. And the whole thing stemmed from not understanding appropriate rudder pressure and furthermore going above the flight director which decayed your speed and then you had a, a yaw problem and you ended up rolling. Make sense? Yes. Okay. Yes. Always in sims, when I see pilots that take off and they have this problem, nine times out of ten I find that they have an issue with